Hello, YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, we're going to talk about DMR radio, digital mobile radio. And I'm going to try to explain it in a way that makes sense to you, so you'll be able to program your radios if you're first getting into DMR. Uh, like me, a lot of people out there uh, had not had any introduction to it. And it took me a little while to figure it out and get my mind around what was going on. So I thought I'll do a video where I explain how DMR is set up, how it's configured, what it is, and explain all the terminology because there's a lot of terminology that throws people off. You know, there's time slot one and two, there's color, um, talk groups, um, uh, <clears throat> there's a, a different way that you handle channels with a DMR radio. Um, so, yeah, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain how the technology was configured. It's set up for commercial radio and how hams have shoehorned that into the way that they've applied it with repeaters and the internet uh, to extend, uh, extend talk groups uh, across the network. So once you understand what's actually going on, then those terms make sense when you're programming a radio. And uh, it, it's a lot easier to understand it. Um, and then we'll also look at a, a sort of semi-generic scenario of programming um, a radio and applying what, I've, what I'm uh, teaching or talking about here. DMR, Digital Mobile Radio, is a standard that was actually ratified by the European Telecommunications Standards Institute, uh, ETSI, back in 2005. It's been around for more than a decade. Um, and it's commercial radio. It's designed for commercial radio, and they wanted, um, they wanted a more efficient way of doing commercial radio. They wanted a more consistent um, level of audio quality, being digital. Um, and they wanted more control and uh, capabilities with the system. Um, where you could configure things for um, for an institution or an installation. So um, we'll uh, go over here to the main computer and uh, we'll take a look at how DMR is configured, what all those terms mean, and how you can program your radio uh, for a DMR repeater in your area. All right, I have Cubic sitting here on one of the local DMR repeaters because I want to show you what the signal looks like. Now DMR is digital. Digital mobile radio. So what does it look like? Well, I'll show you what it looks like and I'll show you what it sounds like. That's what it sounds like. Now here on FL Digi, you can see on the waterfall there, there's a ton of tones. This is the audio. Um, there's a bunch of tones. There you can see some data right there before it went before it went back to an idle. So what we have is is many frequencies here, multi, multiple frequency shift keying <laughs> on steroids, right? So a ton of frequencies there that passed by and the digital data that was uh, involved. Let's do it one more time. Well, if I there we go. Okay, so anyway, digital data stream. All right, so we know DMR is a digital stream, right? It's a digital stream of ones and zeros, a very dense digital stream. Now, one of the uh, labels in DMR that confuses people is time slot one and time slot two, TS1 and TS2. Uh, to explain what those are, let's imagine that we have this digital stream of ones and zeros, okay? And let's imagine that we have audio, and that audio, uh, for one second of audio, takes 4,000 bits, or 4,000 ones and zeros. Okay, for one second, 4,000 bits. Now, let's imagine that our data stream is running at twice that speed, 8,000 bits per second, okay? Twice what you need for that 4,000-bit audio. Well, since we have twice the speed, we could divvy that up, couldn't we? 
So let's imagine that we take that digital stream, right, that's running at 8,000 bits per second. And we have two streams of audio um, that are running at 4,000 bits a second. So what we can do is we can slice that up into two slots, right, and then buffer it in the computer. So the first 4,000 bits will only take half a second, but the computer will buffer that and stretch it out for the full second. And the second 4,000 bits um, will take half a second, but the computer will buffer that and bleed it over into the next second. So what you essentially are doing is you are churning your one stream of digital data into two completely isolated channels at half the data rate. So as long as your stream is running fast enough, you can slice it up into what are called frames. All right, in, in the digital world, this is framing. This, these are packets or frames. So our stream is constant, but we're slicing that up into chunks and using those chunks individually. And in DMR, that is called time slot one and time slot two. And uh, what's happening is your radio is turning on and off. Now, each of these blocks is actually 30 milliseconds in duration, right, in DMR. So your transmitter is turning on for 30 milliseconds, turning off for 30 milliseconds, if it's in time slot one. If it's in time slot two, it's off for 30 milliseconds, and then it's on for 30 milliseconds. And the timing has to be in sync with the repeater or the other radio. So they do some RF tricks to signal each other and synchronize so that they are listening on the same 30 millisecond gaps. And then the radio is turning on for 30 milliseconds and turning off for 30 milliseconds. And that way you have two completely independent digital channels on the single data stream. So that's what time slot one and time slot two are. Now, the way uh, DMR is organized, um, it's really made for commercial radio, right? And in commercial radio, you might have uh, in your facility uh, a bunch of radios, okay? And let's say that you've got those radios organized in groups, all right? So maybe these radios over here are owned by your security staff. And these radios are, are being carried by your maintenance staff. And then you've got a manager. Now, the way commercial radio used to work, you'd use digitally coded squelch, right? Uh, you'd assign each radio a number. Um, there'd be a sub-audible tone that would be sending out a, a number for the radio that it wants to open up. Uh, and that way you could control who hears what. If the manager just wants to talk to maintenance, just the maintenance radios will, will open up when he, when he sends that particular digitally coded squelch. Security, the same deal. He sends a different number, puts it on a different channel. That channel sends a different digitally coded squelch, and only the security radios will open their squelch. So we've had digital squelch control for quite a while. But in DMR radio, these are called talk groups. Since we're using a digital stream, we don't have to worry about opening the squelch on the radios. We can tell the radios to be part of a group that has a name or a number ID. And then this radio can say, I'm going to talk to a certain group. I'm going to do a group call. Now, you've heard that term, I'm sure, with DMR. There are three types of calls. There is an all call, a group call, and a private call. And they're pretty much self-explanatory. A group call, this radio will call talk group two. And these radios, they're all subscribed to talk group two when they're on a certain channel. So they're going to hear the traffic coming over the stream that says, hey, talk group two, and they're going to, they're going to open their speakers and decode the, uh, decode the uh, audio. Um, you've got one RF channel. Everything's going through the same repeater, so all the rest of the radios are hearing the carrier. They're hearing the digital um, information, but their computer chip is saying, oh, that message is for talk group two, so I can ignore it. Now, you can divvy these up on time slots, too. So you could have talk group one on time slot one, talk group two on time slot two. And you could have traffic going, even though you've only got one repeater frequency, you could have traffic going between um, different sets of radios at the same time because they've got their own time slots. You see, that's where the time slots come into play. So repeaters in DMR will split certain groups of talk groups off into different time slots so they can coexist. Perhaps local traffic will be on one time slot and the nationwide talk groups will be on the other so that local guys could be talking on the same repeater that somebody else is using to talk to uh, a talk group. 
So that's what talk groups are in DMR. Um, I wanted to say something more about that. Okay, uh, what amateur radio has done is they have taken these talk groups and they have organized repeaters with an internet connection so that all of these repeaters that are connected over the internet agree on the same list of talk groups. So like on the DMR, MARC, DMR Mark um, network, which is the most popular, there's a North American talk group and its ID number I think is three. All the repeaters that are tied over the internet know about that particular talk group. Um, so say that I'm here in Fort Wayne and I go to a repeater, uh, the DMR Mark repeater, and I subscribe to or, or transmit to talk group two or North American, let's say it's North America. Um, that signal is going to go out to all the linked repeaters and all the linked repeaters that also know about talk, North American talk group are going to send that signal out and all the radios at those local areas and those repeater areas that are subscribed to the North American talk group are going to hear my signal. So that's what talk groups are. So now we know what time slots are and we know what talk groups are and how they work. Now what about programming your radio? Well, let me pull up the uh, programming software that I use for the uh, radiodity that I have, the radiodity radio, and we'll show how you apply that. Oh, wonderful. Don't you just love Windows updates? They always seem to come at the least convenient times. Okay. Yes, yes, go to full screen. All right. So as I mentioned in our other, my other video, we have contact lists, digital contacts, RX group lists, and channels. Let me open up my configuration. So what I have done is my contact lists are different talk groups that I've programmed in. Like here's the North American one that I was talking about. And a talk group is going to consist of nothing more than a name and an ID number. So your DMR network that you're programming for will have a list on the web of the talk groups that are supported with their ID numbers, okay? And all you need to do is you go into your programming software and you set up a contact for each talk group that you want to use, right? North America, Midwest Regional is uh, 3,189. That's its ID number on the DMR Mark network. So all the repeaters are going to recognize that. So you set those up as contacts. You can also put radios in here. If you know somebody's personal um, radio ID, you can put that in here as well. Okay, these are like a phone book. Um, RX group lists, receive group lists, are a list of talk groups that you want to listen to at one time. So I made one called North America, and I just put the North American talk group in it. But I could put the local talk group in there as well if they were on the same time slot on the same repeater and traffic on either one would open the radio up when I'm listening to this receive group list. So it's a receive group. It's exactly what it sounds like. Talk groups that I'm going to listen to together at the same time. So that's a receive group. I made a receive group for each talk group that is um, just that talk group. And I'll show you why in a moment because we're going to get to channels. So the way you set your radio up is you set a channel up with a configuration for a specific um, arrangement of talk groups and receive groups. For example, this is the North American talk group on my local DMR, MARC, DMR Mark repeater. So I've set this channel for the repeater's input and output, power level, um, squelch and all that information, you know. 
Uh, ooh, what's this? Did I change that? No wonder that wasn't working. <laughs> no, okay. Digital. Right, obviously digital. Um, and on that channel, I set my receive group list, you know, to the North American receive group. And the contact name is what I'm going to transmit on. I'm transmitting to the North American talk group. So when I'm on this channel and I transmit, I'm going to this repeater and I'm going to this talk group. And I'm listening to that talk group. So that's how you need to organize it. And you need to set up a separate channel for each configuration. That can mean you can have a lot of channels in your area if you have a busy area. But you can organize that, remember. You can, you can join talk groups up or receive groups up together, um, different talk groups in the same receive group to listen to them. But you're still only going to have one transmit group per channel. So you need to define a channel for each one. Now, if you travel, you can set up zones, which are collections of configurations. I could have one set of repeaters and talk groups for Fort Wayne. I could have a different one for Indianapolis, and I could name these zones Fort Wayne and Indianapolis and basically switch the entire radio's configuration when I switch zones. So that's what zones are for. Um, the one last thing that I want to mention is color code. That confuses people. Color code is kind of the same thing as a PL tone in the analog repeaters. Um, if a repeater is set to color code 1, it's only going to hear radios that are also set to color code 1. So if you had multiple repeaters in an area that were overlapping maybe slightly and on similar frequencies or the same frequencies, they would set themselves to different color codes and that works the same way as a PL tone. So if this repeater was uh, listening on color code 2, and another repeater on the same frequency one town over was on color code one. When my radio is on color code one, I'm only going to bring up that repeater. I'm not going to bother the other repeater. So that's what color code is. Okay, so we've talked about talk groups. We've talked about um, how you program your radio. And we've talked about how DMR is organized. It's just a, a cursory little view of it. I'm, I didn't go too deep into it. Um, I just wanted to sort of help maybe some of you... Uh, figure out what you're doing with DMR when you're getting into it. So I hope this was helpful for you. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.